the guys from Ping. They've kind of shown me how much the equipment matters. I just love that I can hit any shot I kind of want. We're going to be able to tell some fun stories about what goes on here to help golfers play better golf. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Ping Proving Grounds podcast. I'm Shane Bacon with Marty Jurtson as always. And Marty, we've got not just one of the great guys in golf, one of the great golf names today as a guest. Yeah, Seamus Power. It's uh, awesome to have you on, and uh, we're looking forward to kind of getting to know you a little bit more and uh, sharing that with our guests. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah, looking forward to it. All right, Seamus, I got to start with this. Uh, initial thoughts on Johnson City, Tennessee when you got there. How did you go from Ireland to Johnson City, Tennessee? Yeah, it was a funny one. So our coach, like Fred Warren, was definitely one of the first to like embrace international recruiting. Like, I think you know, it's probably hard to get good U.S. recruits to go to Johnson City, but I didn't go on a recruiting visit, so I'd been to L.A. and Miami in my time in the U.S. So <laughs> showed up there. That's like the L.A. of Tennessee. Yeah, it was it was <laughs> something else, but it really is beautiful there. Um, oh, I was very lucky. So my team, my freshman year, I think it was my freshman or sophomore, was like we were all as an all GB9 team. So I knew guys that had been through it and they were very helpful and stuff. But I think without that, it would have been a little more interesting. But it was still it was still quite the culture shock. I mean, just the in introduction to college sports, there's nothing like that, certainly in Ireland, probably in nowhere else in the world. All that stuff was unbelievable. But it was, yeah, great experience and beautiful place. So it was nice. What? Uh, so you were there for four years? Yeah, yeah, I stayed all four, yeah. so, so what was your journey like, you know, from your freshman year to your senior year, you know, from your own personal golf game progression standpoint? Yeah, it was interesting for me because I came in like under the radar, but I actually had a very good freshman year for the most part. And then I had some like hit, hit and miss stuff kind of my next couple of years. And then it was interesting as I wasn't even sure about professional golf really until my senior year. I didn't play very well in the fall because I had knee surgery like the summer before my senior year, but played very, very well my last semester. Um, and that was kind of the best I played in college. And that was kind of the thing that I saw enough to like, I'll give professional golf a shot. So, so right there, going into your final semester, in your mind, you were teetering. Were you, were you favoring maybe not? Yeah, I wasn't. Turning pro? I wasn't sure. I mean, I was lucky enough to have like we had Reese Davies on there, who's like one of the best players in yeah. college golf. He yeah. was there my first year, and then there was Garrett Shaw, who's minimum two or three time All American. They were like he was like our best player my second year, and then it was other really good players. So I wasn't. I'd never been the best player on our team, so I was looking at. You know, all these other guys, like we played against Georgia and you were looking at a team and you'd like Russell Henley, Harris English, Hudson Swafford, Brian Harmon. And you're like, <laughs> wow, so you're going to have to play against all these guys. So it was a little up in the air for me. It wasn't one that like, like 16 knew where I was going to go with it. Yeah. Um, I was later to golf, so kind of later learning all that side. So it was a little different, but I saw enough my senior year at least to give it a shot. Yeah. I, I saw that you said if you weren't playing golf, you'd be an accountant, which is hilarious. I, 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 I said that, I think, when I got my, like, like 10 or 10 or 10 or more years i definitely wouldn't be but i wasn't sure i was i honestly don't know it was one of those things i hopefully never have to know but from just from being around and doing what i've done for so long it would be tough now to go back to kind of i feel like trying to get into something where you could still work for yourself for some sort of business by yourself would be the avenue i try to go down but i had an accounting degree so that was <laughs> that was kind of easy well, and, and and you were like incredibly ranked as a racquetball player as I, a kid is that I was, right i was yeah i actually have a bronze medal from the racquetball world championships when i was like 12. Ooh. um yeah i was very we so it was kind of funny my parents were so I grew up in a very rural place in Ireland. My parents were huge in getting a community center built. And my dad was huge into handball, um, like an, as an Irish sport, like the not the throw kind of team one, the you know, hitting ball with your hand kind of one. But racquetball was taking off. So like racquetball ended up being the sport that got played in the kind of the handball court. And I loved it. Like I, I always had pretty good hand-eye coordination. I just love racquetball. And yeah, we were very lucky. Kind of was taken off in Ireland and I was kind of played at the right time and ended up going to Los Angeles a couple of times for world championships and kind of stuff like that. So it was a really cool few years and yeah, absolutely loved it. Since the popularity of like pickle and paddle have blown up, do you ever get into that at all? I saw like I, my girlfriend and I started playing some like pickleball last year, but then I, I kind of got had some hip issues, not because of that, just like for, through golf. So I haven't played much since, but yeah, it's amazing how popular it's gone. I haven't played paddle um, but pickleball was fun. We only, like we only played a little bit, but it was it was really fun. And it, like it seemed like everyone was playing at my gym in Vegas. Like they changed out a couple of basketball courts to put in pickleball courts and all this stuff. But it's uh, it's so popular. I'd like to play a little, little bit more, but now the hip, hips feeling better. Have you got into that yet, Marty? Are you just, are you just, pickle paddle? No, at all? just dabbled. Just dabbled. 
But I'm trying to get my kids into tennis. They're playing and taking tennis lessons, which tennis. is quite fun. Yeah. You know? Tennis is hard. I mean, with, with racquetball background and stuff, like tennis ever thing, ping pong a thing, I'm assuming you were good at that too. I okay when I was younger. Like, but, so racquetball and tennis didn't match up that well because racquetball, you're hitting everything flat. And then you're trying to, when you're going into tennis, you're trying to change the grip and try to get like those top spins yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. Difficult. Backhand side, I'd be okay. Forehand side, I kind of just what wasn't as wasn't as good as i would like but i mean i i'm able to hit it fine it's just trying to like hit the hit the shots you'd like to hit over kind of shame is, gr grown up in ireland what what did you know obviously you, you played a couple sports but what what did your season look like i'm always curious about that like you with, know were you golf? like all golf in the summer what did you do in the winter what other sports yeah when i got into golf like it was it's strange looking back because we you just play i mean i had friends that got into it and we would play golf from all day long in the summer. I mean, it gets bright at, yeah. I can't remember, at four or five in the morning, it's bright at 11 at night. So you could play all day long. But you, I wouldn't play much during the school year, maybe once on the weekend, because I, I didn't live close to a course. So the season would be like that. But honestly, it was, it was kind of funny. Even when I started golf, it w wouldn't have been my main sport. I would kind of work it in around, so we have Irish football, yeah. we have a sport called hurling, which is like, it's nothing really sound like lacrosse mixed with field hockey and kind of thing. And then I played a lot of racquetball, <laughs> Played a lot of different sports, played soccer for like for a while too. So it was kind of interesting. And yeah, I still like when I go home, there's, uh, you know, the, like my hurling and football coach, she said, that's when I knew I was in trouble when I started kind of, you know, all of a sudden planning like hurling football around my golf. But it wasn't until I was probably 15 ish that I would play at more of a full season. Yeah. Um, which is amazing. I go home now and in the winter, I don't know how I ever played golf in the winter, but <laughs> I, I did and I, I loved it. And uh, yeah, I mean, I just I, I just liked the challenge of it and started getting into it more and more. And then by the time I got to like 15, 16, kind of got picked for some panels. And then like you'd go and you'd do coaching panels and you so then you'd really be all season long. But you do have a shorter season like you could play in the winter, but it's, you know, it's ball in hand everywhere yeah. and it's it's kind yeah. of miserable and it's frost delays. In, and in my season. trips over there to Ireland and in and, and anywhere in great britain and ireland there's not like great it's not like over here we have a perfect range and great oh. practice facility did you have a range at all i've been to a lot of courses that don't even have a range or are you just playing all the time a lot of playing but i mean our drive range was on a probably 25 degree slope and it was probably 200, <laughs> 200 yards long and you're always was always the ball big, above your feet or below your feet i mean you could you could hit either end because okay. it's not it's not like a range it was basically just, basically just a field yeah, yeah yeah um so you could you could that's the thing if you're working on something if you're cutting it too much, you got the other end and hit that <laughs> in. But it was, yeah, it was interesting. You'd pick up your own, all your own balls. It was totally different. It's, yeah, you don't, ranges aren't particularly big in Ireland. It's kind of funny. I don't know if it's, I, I'm not really sure. Like, you guys will just show up to take a couple of swings and get on the first tee and yeah. off you go. Yeah, it's very different. Um, yeah, so you would just be, you'd be on the course a lot more. I mean, in the summer, yeah, you'd play, you could play two, three rounds. You'd come in and you just had other, I was lucky I was at a golf club that was a lot of juniors and we would play so much golf looking back. It was crazy, but yeah, absolutely loved it. Americans go across the pond and they have to work on flighting the golf ball. Yeah. Did you have to learn how to hit the ball up in the air? I always, I weirdly always had a higher ball flight. Um, I always, when I was 16, 17, it always hit a little higher. And obviously in the wind, you want to hit it a little lower, but I always found it easier to hit it lower when you need it to rather than trying to hit it higher when you need gotcha, it to. So gotcha. I was like, yeah. this will be fine. Um, but you do have to learn uh, different shots. But the biggest thing is like going from never playing Bermuda grass to go chipping on Bermuda grass is just, <laughs> it's bizarre. You, it looks like a fine line and you hit it and it goes a foot in front of you. And you're, that takes a little bit of time because it messes with your mind. Like we obviously play a lot of shots around the greens. It's tight grass, but it's like, it's perfect to chip off. If you, if you can clip it, it just, it comes off exactly how you think it is. And all of a sudden you just so many unknowns. And that, that was the biggest part to me. Um, was just figuring that out and even on like on the fairway like little climb the grooves or like it'll like little different things like that we just wouldn't have seen before well you jumped right into the bermuda in tennessee probably right yeah straight yeah. like it was it was bizarre yeah. like I, like it's, it's welcome so, to the states yeah <laughs> here we but, go i was laughing you're, you're so naive growing up in our i'd never seen grass go dormant i didn't know that was oh a thing. yeah yeah so my freshman year that fall you know we got like a tennessee you got whatever some hard frost didn't go to the practice for a day or two and then i go up to practice and I immediately panic, call my coach. I, I think our drive range has been vandalized because it's started to go dormant. And it's like, I, like I've never, I didn't know this was a thing. And it was like, it was the strangest thing. You just, you grow, we grow up, people ask you what kind of grass, especially when I moved to college first. And I was like, I have no idea. Grass is grass. Like there's, we don't have different types. And all of a sudden it becomes such a thing. And, you know, playing out here now, you're, you have to be very aware of, 
you start to figure out what to do on certain ones and all that. But that was a that was the funniest adjustment for me, and especially then coach like driving up in a panic, thinking we've been vandalized, and he's looking at me like I'm an idiot. So <laughs> it was uh, it was an interesting introduction. James, uh, in your time in college, you start working with Scott Sullivan, right? Yep. On just kind of inter- introducing you to equipment optimization, some club fitting things. Yep. Tell us about like your first experience with Scott with Ping and. And, and uh, you know, some of those times in college. Yeah, it was amazing. I mean, when I came to college first, I had a mixed bag of everything. I think I'd like, and I, I wouldn't, I'd be terrified of him now, but like those small McGregor irons and like mixed bag of everything. Can you, I think I'd, I don't I remember a putter. Yeah, so like like Scott then comes in. He would always come. We have our, the Bank of Tennessee in like October, and Scott would like come in and do his like, like uh, trip in around that. And it was just, I'd never really seen anything before. It was amazing. Just even just meant like introducing it to like, what you're looking for with launch and that sort of stuff yeah. or you know before you're just kind of looking at it I was going oh, like that looks pretty good eyeballing it yeah i mean you're, <laughs> I, that's all i would do I like that like, one yeah like so all of a sudden you're being introduced to that it was it was amazing like i switched over to ping was it that fall or that spring and I, I, i've been paying ever since it was just amazing the everything all the options this and that you know like i was i guess naive to all that i'd be like i, I don't like this one so you just assume that you just get a driver from some like a different company like that one's gonna be better not realizing that oh no you can like tweak this to suit yeah. you you can do this you can do that so it was it was amazing and we were actually I was actually talking about it yesterday like the fact that he was doing all that before the adjustable heads yes. too. like I, I don't know how many drivers he was squeezing in those club gloves but yes yeah, scotty was great like um yeah it was amazing he it was amazing service and it was just like it was i was blown away it's like two days later like like all this stuff starts showing up and it's just all of a sudden like night and day difference and like he's going through everything from grip grip sizes to like shafts all this kind of stuff where i was very naive. like you just kind of i don't know you just kind of have clubs and you either sometimes you liked or some more yeah. than others you didn't really know why so it was, it was amazing yeah it was an incredible service yeah yeah so i you brought up how he he was able to do that you know before the adjustable so a lot of times we would actually like trim the ferrule and shim the shaft in tilt it a little bit <laughs> and that's now actually what the adjustable hosel does. does you know it's kind of in there so just tilt it a little and you can really fine tune things and looking at your specs you play you play all your woods in a custom like non-standard setting like you're <clears throat> i think your driver's in the the, the big, big plus, plus right yeah, yeah. So that's like adding one and a half degrees yeah it is so i like i i like it's amazing i i was kind of missing it right like for like a little while and then i so i put it in that big plus and it just i it, i feel like the face is looking at me more in that setting and i yes. like it a lot more it's still only like nine and a half degrees yep. even in the big plus but it just the visually it looks much easier it's as funny as that is it's just visually is the big thing for me as soon as i put that in the dot or even put a if you gave me a nine and a half degree in the dot it feels like that toe is kind of sliding away from me yeah and even if, like other people aren't going to see it like also funny game for that but yeah i, I it's been a huge huge change for me putting that big yeah. plus and yeah, it's incredible the way you can do that. You can completely change how a club changes or plays. You're big minus guy, right? I mean, you do I'm the a, other. You're the opposite. Yeah, I'm a ten five, but I put in the big minus. Interesting, because yeah. I kind of want it the face pointed just one. a little bit yeah. to the right. Um, but yeah. it's it's so fun to have those options to have that individual it, preference to your eye, right? It is, yeah. Because I like I like to fade it, but I don't like to see the face. Oh, I love that. Because yeah. as soon as it, when the face starts getting, I feel like I was going to want make me want to do that. Yeah. yeah. It's like it's it's such a strange game for yeah. that. And yeah. you, like sometimes it's, as soon as you see a club, you don't even realize the time, but like it's somewhere deep down is telling you your guts telling you yeah. we don't like to look at this one. And <laughs> yeah. sometimes it takes you a little bit like, like yeah. to kind of trust it. But yeah, it is amazing to have those options. I mean, you can just completely change how, I mean, how thing how the ball flies, how, like distance it's going, everything basically. It's 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 incredible now. Seamus, your grips are interesting too, right? Yeah. Plus five wraps in the bottom hand, is yeah. that right? Plus two at the top. Tell us how that kind of came to be. Yeah, so I was, this was, uh, CP was, like, we were talking, like, I got them re-gripped, and it's always an ordeal getting them re-gripped. There. There's a lot going on, but I don't have particularly big hands, but I, I think I just have, like, shorter fingers and bigger palms or something someone told me. So I just had, um, I can't, like, probably regular mid-size, I can't, it's been a few years, regular mid-size grips, and... I think it was like one of Bubba's clubs that was like sitting around yes, when I was at the factory. Exactly. It was like seven under yeah, he was a lot, yeah. a lot. And I was just like, oh, that feels nice. So like I was with CP. So he was like, oh, we'll just like, we'll build it up a little bit. And I think he would go like one or two wraps. And I'm like, I could still go a little bit. And eventually at the, at the end of the day, like he was like, so what is that? He was like, and they were like, it's, it's all sorts. There's a black tape in there. There's like other stuff, but it feels amazing in my hands. Like when I hold like a regular size grip now, yeah. I don't know how I ever was able to do it. Like the biggest thing for me is, especially around the greens, I go up and down the shaft a lot. And I didn't like when I would go down near 
like the end of the grip, the club feel oh, yeah, like yeah. really, really small. I'm just yeah. kind of like a toy club. So I much prefer like it's just less tapered. So it's it just feels a little more similar when I go up yeah. and down the shaft a little bit. Yeah. So I liked it. It was something I hadn't really experienced with before. It was just it's something that I picked up and I liked. And it's been like that for a few years. So and it feels amazing in my hand now. In short iron shots, let's say nine iron pitching wedge, you grip down when you fly A lot of times ball? I do, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that's, that, that's when like it feels much more similar to what it does up yeah, the top so it's yeah. I, I like it like it's and it's strange like so many people will like when to pick them up like oh that feels better than i thought it would i was like <laughs> I, I don't know what it is but it, it definitely feels nice in my hand like it just i'm not sure it just feels comfortable the size fits so yeah going with it. Yeah. can we talk about the back-to-back -back aces at the masters yeah for um, sure <laughs> so the first one goes in yeah you have a moment everybody goes nuts obviously yeah. that's yeah. a lot of fun yeah the second one's in the air i mean what's going through your mind it was the craziest like it was it was, it was on seven i actually lipped out like I got up to seven and it hit the hole and was like this far from the hole, <laughs> and then so I was like, oh, that would have been it's cool. It was like the most dialed ever, right? Yeah. And then you get on eight and we're waiting. And I I played the previous year and the pins on the front and this green just comes ripping back. So you're like trying to land it thirty feet past it. And as soon as it lands, you're like, I knew like from last year you kind of knew how it was breaking. I was like, oh, that's got a chance. And it just went in perfectly. And then yeah, it was it was a crazy feeling walking down and like that part of the par three course. It's so loud. It's where right. all the people are. It was amazing walking up there and get to 9T. And, like, you know, there's people be, like they're not behind the 9T. They're like, you know, you know, see, see if you can follow that. But all these guys like saying this kind of stuff. And I was like, and I honestly on 9 didn't even hit a particularly good shot. I probably pulled it four <laughs> yards, but it funneled off the left slope back in. And that was that was obscene when that went in. I just like, I didn't know what to think. And then, yeah, it was, my brother was caddying for me. I thought that was funny because I feel like he was probably the only one who wasn't delighted because he was the one that like he was following that. And I was like, yeah, good look at that one. <laughs> so it was gas. And then, I'm walking up, and they were signing out, like, they're called a group up behind, and Scotty Scheffler dunks it in on top of my ball. Unbelievable. <laughs> so, like, you had to even pull Scotty moment. Scheffler's ball out as I, you're getting your out. I left it out. in there for him, nice. but, yeah, it was, it was in on top of it, yeah. It was, that's it a was, rare scenario. It's a, it's yeah. a, that's what a, should I do here? Purposefully yeah. funnel pins is always fun, yeah, you know? throw it in the water for him. But, no, it was, it was amazing. It was, like, that's such a unique experience. That, like, the, the year before, like, I, I don't have kids or anything yet, but, like, I was playing with – uh scott stallings and keegan bradley both of their kids out and it was just it's just nothing like it it's just a blast there's everyone's in good form everyone's happy to be there it's just amazing and obviously they have like memories like that and then they send which is a kind of a cool thing they send you like crystal but it's like mm. so it's watford crystal which is where i grew up in yeah. ireland wow. so it was like i seen the boxes come in so it was it's it pretty special just uh yeah i mean everyone like i get asked about it it was like on espn top plays yeah, and this yeah. thing and yeah. that so it was it was fun it was just a I don't know. It was diff it's different to normal hole in ones, and obviously the back to back ones was absolutely. Oh, absolute. uh, your brother hit after you made the second. He one. did. Where'd yeah. he go? He hit in the water. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah, yeah. he actually, <laughs> he actually <laughs> hit a pretty good shot, but it was yeah, it was tough to follow. How nervous was he? I mean, I, you know, I mean, I can only imagine if you're sitting up there cold turkey, right? I yeah. mean, you haven't swung all day. So I, I have twin brothers, so it's funny. So like, like they did back to back years, and like they don't play a lot of golf, and then they're like. They're like carrying around. They're like, I and one of them was like, I haven't hit a golf shot for like four months. I'm like, oh, this is not a good place to start. But they both hit decent shots. But they like, it's that's a tough one because there's just yeah, there's water all around and it's a lot of people. When you're not used to it, it's a lot of people around. So yeah, they had fun with it. Uh, since we're on this, this is a big debate on social media. So I'm gonna ask you this: Do par three holes in one count? I definitely counted them. Like I, I remember someone asked me that interview right afterwards. I'm like. I, I, I get it, but I feel like they were long enough or one was like 130 and one was, I think they were both like 130 or something like that. I, I do get to the bed, but I'm definitely counting at Augusta. I think if, if I get it from eight yards at Augusta, oh I'm counting God. it. Well, I, I, I say this, I, I always ask people this. I'm like, how many times do you hole out from 80 yards? You know, if you're a 10 handicap, it's like once in your life, yeah. then count it. Yeah, if you made a hole in one from 80 yards on a short course, I who agree. cares? I'd say count it. Yeah, like if I, I mean, I was saying Pebble last week. If I get one of number seven there, I'm definitely counting it. And that's Absolutely, shorter. Yeah. So I was like, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I definitely did. I definitely did. Yeah. What, what, what wedges do you bring to the par three contest? Or do you have to bring like a nine iron? Or is I, it all wedges? There is. I brought up to a nine iron. There's, I can't remember the exact. There is one hole that's like high 140s. Okay. Um, is it number five ish? It's really fun. Like, and they changed it up. The two years I've played, like, they completely changed it. It was amazing that we were able to do that. Like, the first hole was completely different. It was several holes that, that changed a lot. Yeah. So it was, it was pretty cool. Like, you've the first hole is short, and then the third down the hill is like 70 yards downhill, which is a very unusual distance for downhill. You look like you just throw it on the green. But then I think it's <laughs> four and five are like 
little longer where you're hitting like 140, 150 yard shots. So I think I carried up to a nine iron just to be sure in case it was into a wind or something. So your wedges, Seamus, you play a 58. I Have do. you ever used a 60? Did you grow up with a 56? How did you settle around I 58? Did, I I just liked it around. I liked it around the greens. I did like I had at sixty at one. I had six, six, I went the other way at sixty, fifty six, fifty two, pitching or probably forty eight. But it's I like chipping with the fifty eight, and it fits my set a little bit more. Like the pitching yeah. edges have gotten strong, gotten stronger over the yeah. years. So like that gap between forty six and fifty two is getting a little bit too big, kind of thing. So it was like I. I liked it, and then I much prefer chipping with a 50. I do most of my chipping with a 58. It's just right in between. Everything kind of, it just always kind of made more sense to me um, instead of, like, swapping between 60 and 56 and all that. Yeah. So I like that there. As soon as I was okay with that, then it made, made the gaps going through the bag just a little that, bit easier. That's rare. I'm always curious if a, if, if a player has gone from a 60 60- down to a 58 for green side and that, that's what you you've done that yeah i do yeah, yeah. I, I like it it gives you more yeah obviously if one time you have to hit a flop shot you've got to open a little bit more or whatever yeah. but I, I feel like my standard chip shot is just a little bit simpler with with the 58 so you go 58 60. then 54 bent to 53 yeah i think right you're basically at that point all just fitting the fitting my yardage numbers yeah because yeah. i do Perfect. as i said i do most of my chipping with the 58 so my like my lobby goes 100 yards and i want yeah. like that 50 Four fifty three yeah. goes one sixteen, then you know like one thirty, and then one forty five. So they match up to the my, like I feel like my pitching wedge with the set, like dictates one dictates one end, and then the lob wedge dictates the other, and then you just basically yeah. try and match up. The Shames, I love this because we are built with the new S one fifty nine. We built this really cool wedge app that does the gapping oh, right no for the players, wow. so they can do exactly what you've been able to do out here. Yeah. You know, with the truck and the track man yeah. and. It figure out your gapping. Yeah, for me, it it, it makes it so easy because then it's the most you can be away from a full wedge shot is going to be seven yards, seven eight yards for me. Yeah. So then it's like you just have to need, basically need one other shot with your wedges, which is that one in between, and you should yeah. be pretty set from all the way from ninety yards all the way for me to one forty five. So that's a big gap. We hit a lot of shots in that, and it's nice when you don't have to worry about too much about taking stuff off or this or that or all yeah. That. Uh, Seamus, you played so well in the 2022 PGA Championship. I was reading some of your quotes after, and you were like, I wasn't that far off from getting in the playoff. It feels like that gave you a lot of confidence. Can you kind of go back to that Sunday after the great round on Saturday and just what you were feeling? At, like, how were the nerves going into that final round? I actually felt great because I was – I can't remember what group I was. I was maybe fourth last or fifth. Like, I wasn't, like, right in it, but I wasn't too far away. And it was that – it was the golf course that was going to play – played very difficult right. that weekend. And, yeah, I had chances. Like, I – I look back. I got, a, I had a very makeable like birdie pot on nine from maybe eight feet. A lot of break, but still, even when you're hoping to make a three pot at ten, like again, it's a tough green, but you you would like I wouldn't have expected a three pot it. And then I had really good chances on, like, what is that par five? Like thirteen. I hit, flew it right over the top of the pin and only made a par. And I lipped out on sixteen. Didn't birdie seventeen. I was like, it wasn't much out of playoff in the end it was like damn what, what could have been but that's golf and it was fun to be in i hadn't wouldn't hadn't played many majors at that point so it was fun to kind of get get into a position like that in a tournament like there's definitely a different feel to them um like you you i heard it from guys forever they're like it, you kind of mem- our majors feel different even showing up on a monday and it, they definitely do and that, that was that was a special week i had a good run like even in the u.s open then not too long after that was another good run there so yeah it was some 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 positive stuff so Hopefully, you can kind of get back in there again this year. James, you're, you're, uh, let's talk about your putter a little bit. You're playing the PLD3, right? Yeah. And yeah. and uh, I'm in the office. Tony Serrano would always come in and when you guys were working on that and talk about the design, the nuance. You were super involved in the design of that putter. Yeah, it right? was. Yeah, it was cool how it came to be. Like I, I like Tony was kind of he was sending me like designs. From yeah. The, like, it was and it looked it was amazing and he like some of the things he was able to do. I've always been I've always like like all sort of little custom things i'm slower on the stroke so he's like put copper on the bottom for yeah, like exactly. weigh a little bit more and all this but i love love the design absolutely love it and we originally we designed it in the different hosels so probably i can't remember what number it looks like the kind of the bend hosel yep the, and uh but then i saw that like the answers i think that's the answer for hosel i have now and i absolutely loved it it's been ever ever since i've gotten a few kind of variations one like in the answer style head and one even this week like uh like a, a small catch head yep but it's yeah. hard to get me out of it when i have absolutely love it it's just it makes for like i love i like the size of it where it's like in between mine's like it's that 
whatever you call it. Like it's not the full size. Um, it's like a mid mallet. Yeah, like, yeah, almost a small it. mid mallet. Yeah, right? it is. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not particularly deep, right? So it's it's yeah. it's very nice. And I always thought it looks cool as well. Like yeah. obviously in the all black as well. And yeah, Tony Tony did a great job with it. But it was fun to be involved on. I mean, I, I don't know how much he was taking on, but just even to see like which line he was sh he was able to show me what options there are and all, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, it came out really well. Absolutely loved it. That was. Yeah. I mean, that's probably six. It's gonna be six years ago, maybe now. And yeah, it's been, pretty much been in the bag ever since. Yeah, yeah that cool. was super cool. I remember him working on it in our CAD software, yeah. and then he'd send you screenshots yeah. and back and forth. And from our iPing data, that's our tool. We we put you on, uh, you know, um, uh, an iPod on your and measure your putting yeah. stroke. You have always you mentioned it, but you've always been on the slow tempo ratio yeah. side. So our fitting logic there is that you need you folks with a slower tempo ratio do better with a heavier putter yeah so is that something you've kind of noticed just it, it is experimentally yeah it just feels especially when you get to like you just like slightly longer i've always been an excellent short putter so i was just trying to add a little bit more to like mid to longer putts and just felt easier it felt you know like if you get 40 feet with a regular weight putter for me i feel like i'm taking it back to my waist to get it like long enough yeah <laughs> so like with the extra weight it just gives you a little bit a little bit of help there where you kind of need it but yeah it's it's great that, that one's a nice mix i said it didn't affect my short one it was excellent i love the white line on top it's clean and everything and um yeah it was great i was lobbying to have a call sp1 but didn't quite get it <laughs> get, get it, there get we'll get through. there you know what just you win the masters and then, <laughs> yeah, then you they're... really start to make your demands i mean yeah. i think that's the key you know, you'd go back to kind of college days you're talking about a mixed bag you know, you get this ping bag full of clubs, and then all of a sudden you play ping, and then you get to this point in this pro career where you're helping designing a putter. I mean, do you have these moments where you kind of sit back and go, A, I've made it, but B, <laughs> this is pretty crazy from a kid from Ireland that's going to, you know, East Tennessee State or whatever, and now all of a sudden I'm helping make this putter that you can sell and go get. Yeah, I mean, like, I, like I've... Like I, I try to remind myself not to lose perspective on stuff like as it is it is pretty cool like it's I, I, the biggest moment for me always is is with the things of is when you go into the vault and you actually have because i remember going in there in college and there was you know you're blown away by it and sure. it's just mm -hmm. like you're looking yeah. for your favorite player and then like i have like some putters in there now which is that's when it kind of hits it home to me but yeah having a having the putter design was 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 amazing and yeah i mean like it's it's been a cool journey for me with ping i said i i switched that I can't remember my freshman or sophomore year, and I, I, I've, I like I haven't changed anything almost since. It's like it's so it's been a it's been a real really cool journey, and it's like like Scott Sullivan, like or, I mean I still I when I get to see him when I'm in the office and stuff, he's still in that position, which is amazing. Like it's like he's so good at his job, and that's like I mean the staff and everything has been it's been it's been amazing. It's I always say like my my coolest thing that I can say about Ping is like over the years is like when I was in college, you're treated incredibly well, and I, I feel like. No matter like I was in mini tours all the way up, you're still treated incredibly well. Like no matter what, yeah. if you're struggling, if you're playing well, they still treat you like incredibly well. It's it's amazing. The equipment is fantastic because you have like you've had more and more guys go to like the, I don't know what you're like free agent type right. deals now. And I was like, like people ask me if you thought about that, and I was like, if I thought I could find something better, maybe I would. But like I like I I don't think I like everything I have is it does exactly what I want it to do. So like it's amazing equipment, and it's it's been a it's been a great run. Seamus, let's talk a little bit about your driver uh, in your fitness training. You work with a friend of the pod, uh, Mike Carroll. <laughs> I do, the, yeah. Uh, Irish uh, influencer here in the yeah, U.S. He He's touching yeah. a lot of people with his with his fitness app. Yep. You use his app. But what are you doing on you know, the fitness side or maybe uh, like to the ball speeds side with your driver, right? You've lived in the high 170s? Yeah, I have. So, that, so I, like, I'm, I've been actually talking a lot. So, I, yeah, but at the moment, I'm way down. I like hip issues like the second half of last year, everything feels great, but my speed isn't coming, isn't back yet. Yeah. So I'm working a little bit more on it. But yeah, like that was when I talked to, I started with Mike in 2020, I think. And it was just talking to him. I, I loved his stuff. It's very simple. You're not like, it was like new kind of technology, new stuff where you're, you're much more efficient in the gym with your stuff. And then obviously yeah. golf wise, he was like, realistically, his job is to, like to keep you injury free and to then try especially at my age, like this, I would have been like getting towards my mid thirties. It was like at minimum, you want to be keeping your speed. Ideally, maybe you have to like pick yep. some up if you can. Yeah. I mean, all the stats now show how much of a help it is. So yeah, doing a lot of stuff at the moment, like swinging like speed sticks and doing all this stuff. And it's just trying to get used to me moving because probably from March, April last year, I was restricted like all year. And like, so I wasn't able to swing at full speed. And now my body kind of thinks that's full speed. So it's trying to work, work that back. 
but then obviously the west coast has been horrible weather so oh i know it hasn't been <laughs> hasn't been the most like conducive to uh to to some speed but yeah it's a huge part of golf you know and you're trying to match that up with the equipment and then like and that's that's what's been so interesting with the when I, I gained a little bit of speed with Mike first, and then like you have to tweak the equipment of all yeah. that stuff to strike. Yeah. All of a sudden, it's like climbing a little bit too much with the extra yeah. speed and this and that. So it's it's a huge thing. You know, you see the stats with golf. Every, uh, you know, you can gain a massive place. You can gain if you have it in. If like if it's in there. So trying me trying to get back to something in the high one seventies. It's only like the low one seventies at the moment. So it's uh it's frustrating, but it, it it'll, it'll get there now once I get kind of fully healthy. Yeah, that you bring up a good point that if a player picks up for like five miles an hour of club speed and you deliver it the same, same angle of attack, everything, you're gonna spin the ball like 300 RPMs more. So you have to refit your driver. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. It. Every, yeah, it's it's it is amazing. Yeah. yeah, every all. I mean, that's obviously a big jump, but yeah, even even a little jump, you can just see something different at react with the ball and kind yeah. of try to like balance them up. But when you get them in, a, when you're when you really feel like you're swinging the well with some speed and the equipment's right, it, you can see a big difference, and that's when you see those like stats really help you out. Yeah, the crew was telling me your round with radar at home was like the Pope coming to town, like it was crazy. <laughs> People were coming out of the woodwork to say what's up. What's it like going home these days? Yeah, that was a blast actually. I'd never done anything like that. It was really fun, and it wasn't like the nicest day ever. And I wasn't sure really what to do, but he was like, he's obviously done it a lot. Right, but right. He, yeah, he, he's he's fun to be around. He made it, he made it such a great experience. But yeah, people coming out. I think they were trying to, like, limit some of the people <laughs> because I mean, I, like I said I grew up in a small town, so like something like that is not happening very often. And you know, that's the golf club I grew up in, and it's like I know I've known so many of those people for 20, 25 years. So yeah, it was really fun. It was actually a great. It was a lovely morning right before the Irish Open. Was that last? Yeah, last year. So it, it worked out great. Um, yeah, and yeah, it was fun playing because he, he's still well able to hit it and stuff. And yeah, it was it was a blast. I wasn't sure exactly how it would work, but I was glad he gave me a couple of mulligans and that kind of stuff. I was like, all right, thank <laughs> it's, God. It's tape something. Yeah, it is, yeah, yeah, we've yeah. gone through that as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I also saw you're a big reader. You're yeah. a history reader. So you're on yeah. the road. Are you watching stuff? Or are you reading stuff? Uh, I probably mix it up. Like I'll, I probably. I mean, I, I, it's probably 50 50 but okay. i do like reading a lot yeah i just I, I read a lot of history stuff all that kind of stuff i'm reading about a book i'm reading about like the secret history of the world kind of stuff like this like going back a couple thousand years so all this kind of i like reading that like that sort of stuff i don't read many novels and stuff anymore i sometimes when i'm flying i read novels a little like easier reading but if i'm just sitting like in the room like i like like reading more history stuff and all that so you want what are you watching right now uh not really anything in particular um are you like a brain dead watcher? So like, if you need to go to bed, you got an early tea time. Sometimes, are you trying yeah. to like dive into like some show that you've seen a million times? It, it depends. Like late at night, sometimes I'll put on like I'll put, often put on like The Office or yeah, something. Yeah. Like American that, or UK? <laughs> I actually have always watched The American okay, one. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, I was I missed. I James was, just rolled his eyes. By the way. He's so annoyed at this. I actually was late to both of them. I didn't watch any of them until they were all done on TV. <laughs> so that was that's my one excuse. But yeah, it is funny when Ricky Gervais makes little like appearances in the in the American. It's one. So great. Yeah, it's just and, like such a little Easter egg. Yeah, you know? and I'd always watch the American one first when i started watching like the british one and the first couple episodes are identical it was really funny because but after you've seen the american one it's weird because then you picture like each character a certain way and all of a sudden it's different but yeah they're, they're very funny but you know if i'm by myself like again i'll watch like docuseries and they have like netflix is brilliant for world war ii stuff and all kind of interesting kind of stuff like that so i'll usually if i'm by myself that's kind of what i'm watching you ever dive into golf history stuff I and mean, you got into that at all not, not really, really no like i've learned some but I, i'm not i'm not great with that stuff. I, see we didn't i didn't grow up around golf nobody in my family plays or anything so i wouldn't like i you know i remember it was such a huge deal when tiger won the masters in 97 yeah but i wouldn't have really known like i it was only like when i like maybe 10 years after i was like oh mark ramirez won two majors like won two majors in 98 i was like it was just like <laughs> it was like 97 happened and nothing else happened like around For, that. Till, till like the tiger yeah. slam and yeah. then it was like oh he chipped in an 05 yeah, it's yeah. like following it that was, career so I, I was like a little later to it so i'm not as as good with all that stuff obviously when you know in faldo or someone like that or something someone from like like britain or home one it was a big deal but outside of that it wouldn't be great with some of some of the stuff with it and you grew up Playing junior golf like against Shane Lowry and Rory was kind of coming up. Was yeah. It, did you did you play against them? Where were you in terms of their level at the time? So well, interesting. So Shane was a late bloomer. Like so, Rory. I I think I was thirteen and Rory was or was I like fourteen and Rory was twelve. We were put on some like panel together and he was like it was amazing straight away. Like I, it was he was like all everyone at thirteen fourteen is basically like you know hitting it out there and then chipping and putting and that's how they kind of figure out the play and he's over there with his cut down little blade irons and like hitting high draws and you're like <laughs> we're looking at it i mean i'll never forget it. it's like it was wasn't great conditions he just like 
like he he was like small. He had an ERC driver calorie drivers cut yeah, yeah. way down. He was ripping these things, and it was so strange. But he was amazing right from the get go. Like in an Irish golf, he was just he would do things you just couldn't imagine. It it just wasn't normal. Like he was just hitting driver down these fairways that everyone else is hitting two irons and four irons, and he's just like shipping it over this and that. So he was amazing from the get go. I remember always saying, "Is like I hope he makes it because if he doesn't, like none of us have a chance." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then Shane was later. Like I wouldn't have met Shane until. We were about 17, and then he got on, like, a Leinster team, which is a province in Ireland, and then he was put on the Irish national panel, and then all of a sudden, you're like, well, this guy's this guy's amazing. And he won he, the AM, right? Didn't yeah. he win the AM, as, or you won the, the won Open the, as an AM or something, right? He won the Irish Open as an amateur, but yep. he won, the like, in between, he won everything as an amateur. It okay. was amazing, and it was yeah. just... It was he, it was just all of a sudden you're like where does this guy just come from so he was he was a little different but immediately you could tell he was going to be special as well and yeah I mean those guys have amazing careers and it's, it's been fun to watch because I said like I've I've met them like I've known them for so long it's it's kind of been amazing they've done like they've done so much for Irish golf I mean geez Rory's going to go down as one of the best players ever and it's just amazing to have seen him right from the start it's it's uh it's pretty special it's, it still blows me away when I watch him hit the ball it's just it doesn't look like other people at all it's it is it's amazing and it's uh. It's different level of stuff, but yeah, they, they, those guys. It's, it, it, it's amazing how long they've been on tour now. Like, well, Rory especially. Yeah, I mean, I know. you know, like you're going back so to like oh nine and ten is yeah, like yeah. when he started to like win we, and I compete, know. and then it's 2024, and he's still one of the best in the world. It's I know. crazy. I think because I think his first year and like he got like turned pro in 07 after the Walker Cup. I think wasn't it somewhere around there. I mean, that's amazing. And I mean, even Shane. I think this is maybe like Shane's fifteenth year as a professional. Crazy. It's like wow. what in the world? It's amazing the way the years go. But yeah, those guys have have done so many amazing things, and yeah, it, it's been really cool to kind of watch and follow them as as, as they've come up. Seamus, what was your time like? Like b- between college turning pro, and then you made it on tour. What seven, six, seven years later, somewhere. Yeah, so I got my. Yeah, actually, six years after I finished. Uh, in college, I got my PJ Tour card. What was yeah. that journey like? You know, mini tour, yes. corn fair, and, and Marty. And one of the keys to a lot of these pros is like he won a lot. You know, like if you kind of go through the resume, it seems like you kind of won on the different stages the, as you built up. Yeah, I yeah. did. I mean, it was it was fun. Like I wasn't when I finished college first. Then I was trying to figure out if I was going to go play in Europe, play in the U.S. Eventually decided on the U.S. So moved back at the end. So graduated in like May or whenever it is, April, May, and ten. Yeah. Moved back to Charlotte at the end of 2010. So because the e it's not even around anymore, but the e golf tour was yeah. and it was i tried to tell people like it was a, it was a really well-run tour like my first year like you'd get 30 35 thousand for a win it was like properly run it was really like they, they, yeah. done, they did a really good job so I, I went to you know i started playing in 2011 and like i mean it just shows like i wouldn't have had a whole lot of money turning pro like i remember my first tour and i'll never always tell people this is like whatever it said I, I think they might have been like wednesday through saturday so like i booked my hotel to check out on friday morning it's like, <laughs> it's like i can't risk this 200 dollars if i missed a cut so I that, that really boosts the confidence yeah, yeah. too but made the cut like and i remember i think it is the greatest thing ever pulled back into the hotel like sitting in a car park trying to connect to the wi-fi to book it on priceline again I was like, this is really but I, that's i mean that's what you do in you're, 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 trying to, you're trying to keep the expenses down but i was very lucky like the e-golf tour was was really it was very strong, so I ended up playing that for four years. You know, I like everyone else. I mean, who was I? My first in 2011, like I got through. I was at second stage, and Ben Curtis makes like a 40 footer across the 70 second green to stop me from getting through second stage. Oh, we both would have got through. Like I didn't have a great last round, but I made like a 10 footer in the last, which I thought got me through. Like when I got oh. to the score stand, they were like, "We think that got you through." And then I see this pot, and you're like. Walk in the car to go to the airport. It's like I hope that didn't. Uh, oh, that cost can that me. please be for bogey? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so if he two putts, we both go through. But anyway, don't. And that was when it was. Oh, I guess the cards are back, but it was still like twenty five PJ cards right. at yeah. that final stage. And Patrick yeah. Reed like was at that like stage. I mean, it was that same kind of timeline. And you know, twelve. I go to second stage. I think I missed by second stage by one or two shots again. I'm like, oh god, this is terrible. Thirteen. I go to first stage. Get sick at first stage. Finish like last. I'm not sure I broke eighty because I was like. I might as well try. Yeah. And then 14, like I had a great year on mini tours, won multiple times, like did all sorts of cool things. But then you're going, still going to Q school and you're like, oh, this needs to count. But yeah, it's a Q school is a horrible, like it's, it's a tough tournament because you're all you're worried about is not playing. You're not worried about playing well. You're worried about not playing badly. Right, right, right. Mm. But I, like we was at the PJ national and like it was six rounds and I yep. chipped it stone dead for birdie and I was going to finish like it was card was well locked up but I was standing looking into the water and I was like geez I was so relieved it was just like and I was like I remember thinking it was like geez I gotta do everything I can to make sure I never have to come back to this again and <laughs> I haven't been back to whatever that was that was 2014 so yeah I got on the corn ferry and then 
I had a rough start my first year on Corn Ferry, but then kind of got my feet under me, kept my full card, and then I won in 2016, and it kind of got me going and got my card in, into fall in 2016. Marty, do you remember your first mini sport tournament? Yeah, it was. Uh, it what was tour the, was it? It was, it was the Hilton Open in uh, Socorro, New Mexico. Nice. Yeah, Socorro, New well, Mexico. How nervous were you, and how'd you play? I was pretty. I was pretty nervous because you're, pon- well. you're ponying up a lot of money. Yeah, you are. Yeah, I'm splitting the hotel room with three other players. The the high score sleeps on the floor. Yeah, that's good. And, that's uh, good. But I I turned a um, I turned a little profit. I think it was like six hundred dollar entry. I made like nine fifty. <laughs> nice. Uh, I paid I, for the next entry fee. I think I told you this. My my first mini tour event was Pepsi Tour out here oh, in Arizona, yeah. and um I made more money. I shot like seventy eight. And I made more money on skins than the guy that won it. It was, it had, it was a mini tour tournament that had skins you could buy into. I remember. And I made like tour. two skins and one more than the guy that got first that oh day. And God. I was like, "This is going to be a tough sledding. This yeah. is not going to be the easiest thing in the world." Yeah, mini mini tours is not glamorous at all. It's tough going. It is tough going. I like yeah. the high score sleeps on the floor. Oh, yeah. yeah, we always did that. Yeah. <laughs> you got to put over the last. Like, how stressed were you? Like, I don't want to sleep on the floor. My back's hurting. That's yeah. what I'm worried about. Um, Seamus goals for this year, kind of what are you looking at as, as what you want to do and accomplish in 24? Yeah, for me, it's going to be like, like start every year. It's going to be to, to get at least one win. I mean, there's nothing like winning. Like I've been able to win twice, but it's just, yeah, there's just nothing like that. So that's always, that's the one goes on a page first. And then for me, it's going to be get back in the top 50 in the world. So the injury second half of last year is kind of like, obviously wasn't able to pick up any points or whatever. And then the other big one's going to be get to the tour championship. You know, the, the last two years now I've been inside the, the top 30 going to the playoffs and then I haven't played as well as I would have wanted. Mm. This last year, obviously, with the injury and the year before, I just didn't play well. So it's like, like they're going to be my big three. Like, um, you know, there's a lot of little, you know, um, like statistical goals and stuff I have as well along the way, but they're going to be my big three that I'll be kind of, you know, looking at kind of regularly just to make sure I'm kind of head in the right direction. Do you have a golf course that's your favorite on tour? TPC Sawgrass is hard to beat. Like we we we're very lucky. We play so many, but that's a that's there's something about. I feel like it's such a great test of golf. There's short holes, long holes. Like you got to be able to draw it, fade, do all these things. And I always think it's a great sign when you look through the past champions. There's some long hitters. There's some short hitters. It's a great mix. That's a good yeah, point. I, I think yeah. that's a great sign of. A it's course. just who's playing. I mean, you you really look at it. Well. It's like who played yeah. well yeah. this week. It's not yeah. favoring. I mean, Rory's won there. Yeah. Tim Clark's won there. You yeah. Know? Exactly. I mean, there's very very different winners. And I think it's a it's a great sign of a course. But I mean, we're like we're just coming like from Pebble. You get to play here with Riviera next. I mean, we're spoiled. It's hard to pick one. Like Riv is not an amazing one. Um. But I, like I think TBC Sawgrass to me is a is a great mix of everything. It's like intimidation factors, birdie chances, all these kind of things mixed in together. And obviously, it's the Players Championship as well. You know, it's the one, it's a it's a non major one where everyone's looking to win. So I think that thrown in as well is just it's just an incredible combination. Jim, so you you talked about some stats in your goals. Are you a big stats guy? Do you dive into them? Do you use them? Or are you kind of just uh, just I'm lightly somewhere in between? Okay. Like the like some guys are, it's so interesting. The statistical stuff on course, I don't use as much as other guys. Yeah. But I'm always monitoring my own stats to like pretty closely to know because you could like golf is a really strange game. Like I, sometimes like you can come off a course and you're kicking yourself and you're you're telling your caddy, oh you're suck at this and so on. And then you look at the stats and you're like, huh? Because like, for some reason one shot you might have hit really annoyed you. Yes. You yeah. Know, you, it might cover <laughs> up like three or four other poor shots that you don't notice because. Yeah. Everyone's the same, but at least for me, it's like there's a certain miss that a player like will annoy a player. If you hit one of those, it'll cover up everything else. Whereas if you hit three or four, a miss that doesn't bother you almost, they almost can go under the radar. Yeah. But for me, then you're always for like a good way of tracking like the wedges and like all that sort of like, proximity to the hole from certain yardages. It's a fun way to practice too. It's like I look at a tournament and or even how you are in the seasons. Like oh, I, I'm down in say 75 to 100 yards. So then you just like extra little bit of time to practice that week, and then you, you kind of like you know next couple or next off week i have it's going to be okay that improved a little bit this one's down a bit so yeah. then you and this kind of yeah. go through it and you eventually get to all aspects of it and it's uh i think it's a big part of it now i mean they know so much the encore stuff to me is interesting because like strategy your strategy, strategy was yeah okay yeah. Is you see some of them and i some like i can see what they're what they're getting at and they're not i mean they're not trying to get at anything these, these are the stats but they don't take into account like how a player sees certain holes like yeah. i was like travelers i mean it's obviously very like but travelers the ninth hole of travelers like stats say hit driver hit driver and i yeah. i've i've stood there and i was like you can't see anything you don't know where you're hitting it <laughs> it's like if i hit if i pull this it's in true like and, and I, it doesn't suit me at all because 
I've always played it. I played it very well playing it the way I like to see it play. And stats are tricky like that. I, I like seeing the stats to see what they recommend, maybe trying it in practice and see if you like it or not. Yeah. Rather than, but I've also played with guys who just like, that's what they do. They're like, this is a strategy, it pull club, do go. This, do it. Yeah, binary, and they go. Like a computer. <laughs> yeah. Like, and some guys, it's the same like with the, you know, on the greens, obviously they've reduced it, but like the aim points stuff. Remember like the books from a couple of years ago, yeah. the exact numbers? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I played with Joel Damon. Like, I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, but like, he on. <laughs> we, we will not mind you saying yeah, it. Yeah, true. Whatever enough. it is. <laughs> but we played at Pebble on, and I was, I was blown away. I'm, I don't think gino or him read one pot all day long just look at the book they were looking because you know they had it it was so exact they were like pacing it off and, and it's like this pot is this and like he put it really well and i'm like blown away because i i don't really <laughs> i like reading pots and stuff I've always been a good potter but i'm looking at this going is do i need to be adapting here or what like what's going on so you kind of look into do a bit of research with it and see where it, i use it a little bit now in little spots but it, i think you golf is very unusual you have to sieve through a lot of stuff to find out what you like and what works for you and other stuff even though it might work amazing for certain like 10 other players if it doesn't work for you you have to get rid of it and find something that does work for you so i use the stats where i think that they help me and i yeah. i look at them and I, I try analyze them and see where i can make improvements where i have made improvements and I can keep it there and do all that sort of stuff and kind of just mon monitor myself basically i like that approach to encore strategy it's like I, the daniel kahneman book thinking fast and slow it's like using stats to delay your intuition right so if you stand on nine at travelers they might might say do this like send it this doesn't feel right it doesn't you feel gotta right. do what you gotta you yeah know, you're, you know i mean it's like the nfl playoffs i mean you think about earlier yeah. this year in the nfl playoffs and like you know, the Lions had this strategy, yeah, which made sense for the regular season and the whole year. And at some point you go, do you kick the field goal and go up three scores, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. you know, analytically, what yeah. is it telling you to do? But you kind of got to like maybe potentially change it in certain situations. Yeah, I remember, I don't remember like the Moneyball movie. They kind of go yep. into that a little bit. Yeah. 162 games into like a five game series. Do you change it and stuff? And I mean, it's forever. It's all, it's in all sports. It's yeah. So watch that Dan Campbell, like, should he have gone? Should he have not? Yeah. <laughs> and obviously, it's so, you can't separate yourself from the results because if they make it and get it, it's like this is what's stuck to them all year. And then if they don't get it, also, should they have changed it? But like, I mean, Greg Olson was commentating, and that's what he said. It's like they've done this all year. Yep. This is how it's gone. But it's like I don't know. It's going to be it's going to be a battle that will go on for a long time. And I'd say like the older coaches in every sport must be looking at it like cringing. But then you see these up and coming guys, and they say like they have that in the NFL. They have a book, and it's like totally. fourth and two from this line. It's 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 out of green light, red light. Yeah. It's like you go. It doesn't matter, and that's, that's statistically gives you a. And even so, do you see the stats for that? Them going for it increased their chance of winning from like ninety four point two to ninety four point three. So technically, he was correct, but they lost. They lost the game. Like so, it's like. Uh, Look at uh, Shane, it's like the, the NFL analyst over here. <laughs> Dan Campbell and Greg Olson. I mean, but, like yeah, it was just, Gaelic football's out. Yeah, <laughs> NFL is in. Yeah, it was just well, I was, when I lived in Charlotte. Like Greg, I randomly met Greg on a night out. Great guy, huh? I didn't get speaking for long. He was just so big. I was yeah, blown yeah. away. But it was like, you know, I was always a fan of him from being in Charlotte and stuff. But yeah, it was just like stats. Like that's the thing with stats. And every coach in every sport is going to swear by what they believe. And it's like, I feel like if you believe it strongly enough, it's probably the best strategy for you in a way. So it's it's going to be, but I, I'm sure they all use it behind the scenes to a certain extent. But it's, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's going to be a long battle in sports. Before we let you go, I saw that you're a Pats fan. Now, are you still a Pats fan? Because I know you're a Brady guy. Yes. So are you staying with the Pats or are you moving on somewhere else? So, again, these things are filled out so long ago. I'm, I'm actually a Panthers fan. because gotcha. when I So when I moved to the U.S., the only team you would have heard of would be New England yeah, Patriots. Because yeah. that would have been 06. Mm -hmm. They yep. were in the middle of winning everything. And then the NFL had – it's really very popular back home now, but it wasn't back then. Mm. So your favorite, like, American sports team is like, oh, that's the only one I heard. Like, you would have heard of the <laughs> Chicago Bulls. Like the Lakers, maybe the Knicks, the, yeah. the Patriots, not many, the Dallas Cowboys, like it wouldn't have been many teams. So I was like, I mean, oh, they're good, so let's put them out. But I, I'm actually a Panthers fan now because okay. I live in Charlotte for 10 years. But like my, when I was in college and stuff, I was following the Patriots because they were the only one I kind of knew of. But then when I moved to Charlotte, I lived like, you know, a few hundred yards from the stadium and it was cool. And so I became like a Panthers fan and it hasn't been the best time for them. But yeah, and this year wasn't great. No, this year might get like, better. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Pricey, pricey uh, goes. Well, Seamus, we really appreciate the time. Oh, no problem. Great Thanks chatting with you. Out. Great kind of learning a bit more about you, not just as a golfer, but as a human. And uh hope you have a great year. Hope you stay healthy and uh hit it a lot longer. Good equipment. Be <laughs> excited to see. There you go. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on. That's Seamus Power. This is the Ping Proving Grounds Podcast.